Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to our agenda, our agenda meeting for the evening. I'll say agenda for our regular meeting, which is right here in your hand. I hope you got it. Well, thank you for coming for our meeting. It's the, uh, for the record, today is Tuesday, May 1, at 7 o'clock. And we'll move along. I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm elated to see this. I wish we could have this many people at every meeting because this council reflects the will of people. That's the whole game. And without people, we don't get all the will. So <laughs> if you understand where I'm going, I'm elated you're here. Oh, I'm sorry. We got problems with this thing. It. All right. Better now? Better now? Can, can you hear me now? All right. This thing is supposed to have some type of orbital thing, but, but you have to shoot right in the center. So we miss, we miss. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm elated to see everybody here, and I thank you very much because uh, we'll move along. We've got a number of things to do. Uh, our agenda's not too lengthy, but we've got some preliminaries. Uh, okay, the first item on the, of uh, business are the approval of minutes. We have three sets of minutes for uh, Friday, February 23, uh, and Wednesday, March 28, and April 3. Uh, are there any corrections to the minute, or is the chair here have a motion that be approved as they're written? Make a motion to be approved as read. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. I would encourage everyone to try to get a copy of our budget agenda minutes from January the 28th. They're very extensive and they make for interesting reading because you see who advocates for what. Very important minutes. January, excuse me, February the 28th. Okay. Thank you. Once they are approved tonight, they will be posted onto the website. Okay, further discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes? Yes. Opposed, no. Okay, the minutes are approved. All righty. Uh, we've got three persons who requested to speak tonight, Lynn Hobbs and Ann Freeman and John Shambly. Uh, we'll start with Lynn since she's number one on the list. Lynn, would you come to the podium, please, and state your name and address for the record so we can get it read into the minutes? Yes. Please excuse my hoarseness tonight. Yeah. I don't know whether it's allergies or what, but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll Everybody's do the best. got it, pollen or something. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I am Lynn Hobbs, and I have lived at 303 Golfers Lane for the past 18 years. I requested to speak at the April meeting one week prior, but was told I could not because the request must be made in writing 10 days prior to the meeting. I strongly encourage you to examine whether the town is in accordance with North Carolina's sunshine law regarding this policy. Since I was unable to speak at the April meeting, I addressed an open letter to the council which was published in the Nashville Graphic on April 11th expressing my concerns about a proposed seven cent tax increase in next year's budget. I will not revisit that information again here tonight. If you did not get a copy of that letter and would like one, I will leave one with your town clerk. When I wrote that letter, I said I had some concerns. I am not only concerned now, but as a citizen and taxpayer of Nashville, I am stating my opposition to a tax increase. I have looked over the proposed budget for next year, and I see no reason for a tax increase. And justification for one is yet to be given. It's troubling to think the council would approve a seven cent tax increase without any demonstrated need for it. It had been my intent to attend last week's budget work session, but my brother passed away and his service was that afternoon. I have requested and received the June 30, 2017 audited financial statements, the 2016-17 and 17-18 adopted budgets, as well as the proposed budget for next year, which was used in last week's work session. And I'd like to thank Town Clerk Lou Bunch for her timely and courteous responses to all my requests. As I poured over the data, specifically the proposed budget for next year, I find no valid reason for a tax increase. Revenues are stable, and expenditures have increased because requests have increased. 
I found myself digging into the details and seeing ways the budget could be balanced without a tax increase. But then I stopped because this is not my job. It's the job of the budget officer and the town council to come up with a fiscally responsible financial plan that provides what is needed for the town without unduly burdening taxpaying citizens, both individuals and businesses. That is your job. There are proven best practices for governmental budgeting that if applied will produce an achievable plan. The UNC School of Government has invaluable resources and in fact next Wednesday, May 9th from 10 until 3 o'clock right here in our little Nashville, the UNC School of Government is providing a workshop on budgeting and financial basics for local elected officials at the Agriculture Center. Taught by an extremely knowledgeable and practical professor, Greg Allison, whom I and many finance officers in the state often look to for guidance. I encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity right down the street. Questions I would ask if I were considering this budget. One, I'd want to see a revenue and expenditure projection through June 30, 2018. I expect it will show again this year revenues exceeding expenditures apart from one-time capital expenditures. Any departmental budget increase should be explainable, explainable and justified. Of course, certain costs such as insurance have gone up and are out of the town's control. However, costs like travel and supplies provide opportunities for holding down expenditures and increases for staff should be considered and provided if at all possible. Any new request, especially capital, should be prioritized. Can the purchase be delayed to a future year? Is it essential to the ongoing operation of the town? Are there alternatives? Lastly, I strongly encourage revisiting the no debt policy of the town. Local governments have the distinction of borrowing money at very low interest rates not allowed in the private sector. There is valid experience across the state of effective borrowing being used by local governments, big and small, to secure needed capital items without an unnecessary drain on existing resources. Folks, we're all friends and neighbors here. Let's work together to keep Nashville on a well-directed path we all can be proud of. That's my desire, and I believe it's yours too. I thank you for your time and your careful consideration. Thank you very much. Okay, Ann Freeman. Okay, Ann, thank you. I'm Ann Freeman, and I live at 413 East Park Avenue here in Nashville. Thank you. I'm here mainly to express some of my very own thoughts and concerns. I've lived in Nashville all of my life, except for approximately 10 years. Nashville is home, and it will always be our home. Nashville is known for being a small town where people speak to people they don't even know, where you meet new people in the grocery store and you invite them to church. It's a wonderful place to live, and I think all of us will agree to that. I was shopping in Walmart last week, and one of the men that works with Jamie Baines in the sanitation department was passing me on one of the aisles. I said, hey, how are you today? He replied, I'm fine, and I hope you are. I said, I'm great. He said, you must recognize the uniform I have on, because he had on the town of Nashville uniform. He said, where do you live? And I replied, I said, I'm Brian Hassel's mother-in-law. I knew that's how he would know me. And he said, I know exactly who you are. Brian brings us the cakes and cookies that you cook for us all the time. I said, yes, that's me. He said, thank you so much for all that you do for us. And my reply was, no, thank you for what you do for all of us. 
here is a man. He doesn't know everyone in town's name, but he knows where each one of us live. And he cares about each one of us. That short conversation meant so much to me, and I will never, ever forget it. Our town manager and our finance director could learn something from this kind man. They could learn how to treat people the right way with a positive and caring attitude. I was not in attendance at the April 3rd town council meeting, but I have watched the YouTube video on the town of Nashville's website four times. And I've read the articles on WRL, the Nashville Graphic, and the Evening Telegram. I don't, per I don't personally know the Reams and the Hyde families, but I want them to know how vi very, very sorry I am for the way that you have been treated by Mr. Raper and Ms. Maudlin concerning the burial of Mrs. Reams' mother and many, many others in this room I know feel the exact same way that I do. Um, and that's one of the reasons so many people are here because of the situation. I regret with all my heart that this happened and it should never ever have happened to you or to any family. I have also spoken with an 80 year old woman who was going through the same situation with her cemetery plots. At the time I talked to her, with her, she had made her third trip to the town office and she had all of her paperwork with her, which is what Mrs. Maudlin had requested, she said. She said she was going to have to make another trip to the town office because neither Ms. Maudlin or Mr. Raper were in the office. So she was told that no one else in the office could help her, so she'd have to come back another day. This is an 80-year-old woman we're talking about. And this is absolutely ridiculous. There are other situations people have shared with me. I've gotten more phone calls, more visits from people. I do not have to bring it up. They bring it up to me. But they are disgusted with the way that they have been treated by Mr. Raper and Ms. Maudlin. But I think of all of you understand the point that I'm trying to make here. Mr. Raper and Ms. Maudlin, I say, shame on you, shame on you for the way you have treated not only the Reams and Hyde families the way you have, but also the way the rest of the taxpayers and business owners have been treated by you. I have spoken with several business owners. It took one owner approximately six months to receive payment from Ms. Maudlin, the finance director, for services rendered. She wouldn't return phone calls, and when she was finally reached, she had excuses. There is no excuse for the town not paying their bills on time. It's ridiculous. You're not going to allow me six months to pay my water bill. If I don't pay my water bill, it'll be cut off in just a matter of a few days. I don't understand why both of you, Mr. Baper and Ms. Maudlin, I don't understand why both of you feel that you have the authority to treat the taxpayers the way that you do. We pay your salaries. You work for us. In my opinion, it's a form of bullying. This way of treating the people of Nashville has got to stop, and it has got to stop now. I feel that the town council members and Mr. Mayor have given Mr. Raper and Ms. Maudlin too much control. We are taxpayers. We have elected you to office to look out for our best interest, for the best interest for the town of Nashville. We have put our faith in each one of you, and you are not fulfilling your responsibilities. Unless you take back the control, matters are only going to get worse. I am requesting you, the Nashville Town Council members, and you, Mr. Mayor, I am requesting that you ask 
Mr. Raper and Ms. Modlin to resign from the town of Nashville, effectively moving. <laughs> And if they choose not to resign, they should be fired immediately. It's up to each one of you to make the right decision for the citizens of this town of Nashville. You cannot continue to put this problem on hold. It has got to be handled now. The people attending this meeting are fed up. Just ask them. They are all just as fed up with it as I am. It's up to you to turn this horrible situation around. Prove to all of us here, prove to us that you deserved our vote. Prove to us how much you care about the town of Nashville and its citizens. I am asking you to do the right thing. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you for your time. Okay, John, you're up. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Could, could I have your name and address for the record, please? Oh, yeah. John Chandler, 413 East Park Avenue, Nashville. Thank you. Event centers. We know a local town that's got an event center, and they have raised taxes twice already to pay for it. Fortunately, our event center is a county complex north of Washington Street. The good thing about this event center is our town didn't pay for it. The bad thing is we lost some prime tax base property. Therefore, the town has to work harder to make up for the loss. This should not be done by raising taxes. It should be done by recruiting business and new residents. We need to streamline our government, make our town desirable to newcomers. Unfortunately, we seem to be doing the exact opposite. Examples, proposed tax increase, the cemetery disaster, policemen stopping uh, citizens on every single corner. Stop and think how this looks. Ann and I would like to personally thank Louise Hinton and Larry Taylor for their kind efforts during the cemetery situation. Mr. Mayor, you could have done better. Thank you. Recently, I purchased a building in downtown Nashville and went to town hall to get my water cut on. The first thing I was told is that I'd have to have a copy of my deed to prove that I owned the building. How absurd can that get? Then I was told there'd be a $100 deposit I told the lady, I said, I have a fairly high credit rating, so wasn't that good enough? She replied, the town doesn't check credit ratings. So I asked, when could I get my deposit back? She replied, when the service ended and there's no interest paid either. Now, how do you suppose a customer feels when faced with these obstacles? So let's example, let's say I own a piece of property for 30 years. The town still has my deposit. How much, where, where are all these deposits? Anyway, is it legal? If it is, it should not be. Getting back to recruitment. The town has one of the best recruiters there is, Brown, Brian Hassel, who is the town planager, town planner, and also my son-in-law. 
Unfortunately, he has resigned. Therefore, I have a suggestion which will help with the budget. Don't fill this position. At that time, if Mr. Raper is still employed, then let him do it. He obviously has the time. In conclusion, in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with two thoughts. Impotent means not showing respect for others, rude, offensively bold. Arrogant means having or revealing exaggerated sense of one's own importance and abilities. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we've got a number of items for consideration tonight as we move forward. Uh, the first item is a presentation by Marguerite Bishop for the Park Recreation and Cultural Resources with an update. Marguerite, where, I can't see behind the post. Okay, there you are. Okay. Hi, I'm Marguerite Bishop. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation and Cultural Resources here for the town of Nashville. Um, I wanted to give an update in um, advance of the proclamation that will be read next on the agenda. Um, participation at the department's events are up, which is always refreshing news. There are 245 registered participants for baseball, softball, and t-ball this current season, which is up another 45 from last season, um, last spring. Every Saturday is a bustle at Glover Park. We run three game times, 10:30, I mean 10, 11:30, and one. This week is actually screen, National Screen Free Week for um, families and youth, and we have a couple of events this, um, this Sunday to wrap up the week. Eco Explorers is our new environmental education program for elementary age kids from 2 to 3.30 at Stony Creek Environmental Park. The event is then followed by yoga from 3.45 to 4.45, also at Stony Creek Environmental Park. You can register for both of these through the town website or our Facebook page. Our Walk With Ease adult walking program will start registering again in the next couple of weeks. You can register again also through the town re website or on town at Town Hall. And this is an adult walking program that is approved through the um, American Arthritis Foundation. May 19th is National Kids to Park Day. And we will have ball games on that day in the morning and an outdoor movie in the evening with a troll extravaganza. Um, we're showing the movie Trolls. We encourage all um, to visit in our parks and participate in our programs throughout the year and not only on this day. Okay, thank you. And what she was referring to next is a proclamation uh, to create a Kids to Parks Day, which is something we've been doing for several years. And all, all of these things have to be read, so if you'll bear with me, there's a number of words here. Uh, it says, whereas May 19, 2018 is the 8th Kids to Parks Day, organized and launched by the National Trust Fund, held annually on the third Saturday of May, and whereas Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages families to get outdoors and visit America's parks, and whereas it is important to introduce a new generation to our, park, to our nation's parks, and whereas we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat the issues of childhood obesity, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and hypercholesterolemia, and whereas Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants, and whereas Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and the outdoors, and now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council of the Town of Nashville does hereby proclaim to participate in Kids to Parks Day. We urge the residents of the Town of Nashville to make time, May 19, 2018, to take the children in their lives to a neighborhood, state, or national park. Adopted this first day of May 2018 with appropriate signatures and attestations. Does the Chair here motion to approve this proclamation? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, there being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. 
It is so proclaimed. Okay, the next item we've got is a consideration of a CMAC project, <coughs> of which there are, there are actually two. This is something we've been working on for quite some while to get uh, some sidewalks worked. I'd like to call on our planner, Brian, to give us an update on what we're doing here. Um, yes, if you recall your budget work session, the one that I was a part of, um, you asked me to go ahead with these local agreements. So that's what you guys have before you. Um, we successfully applied for two CMAP projects a few years ago. Um, once you approve these local agreements tonight, they will be sent to the DOT. Um, these are federal dollars, so you're not eligible to spend them until October. The plan is to design and acquire the right of way the first fiscal year and build it the second fiscal year. So I encourage you to whoever takes my spot to um, keep them on that timeline. Um, the two projects, one I call uh, Winwood Phase 1, and that's going to be hopefully converting Oak Street into a paved street and putting a sidewalk on one side and then going down AM to get back to first, and then we will stop at the bridge over 64. Um, we do not want to do that in one project because the bridge is not going to be replaced at this time, so we do not want to encourage people to walk across it with putting sidewalks on both sides. Um, that'll be a future project. Um, the second project that we got is from Glover Park all the way to South Creek, which is part of our bike and ped plan that we adopted about 10 years ago. We want to run sidewalks to the most outer limits of our city limits, and so this will accomplish that goal. Um, what you have before you is a breakdown of the price, the scope of the project, and the local agreements that need to be signed and sent back to the DOT. Okay. And we have, we'll now go read the capital, or, capital project ordinance for the first one, which is C5616E, and that will be the same number with the F on it, one going one way and one the other. But just before we start, before we do that, let me interject a brief comment. About 15 years ago, we were looking forward as to what we would need, need to do to improve the livability in Nashville. And, as, and the subject of sidewalks came up because some streets had sidewalks, some had partial sidewalks and this sort of thing. So we uh, set a plan together to build sort of a north-south, east-west sidewalk plan. And at the time we were looking at that, realizing what it was going to cost, I had a whole hopeless attitude about it. You know, it's easy to put it on paper, but over 15 years of putting things together, a few dollars at a time, a few grants at a time, and hooking things together, we've almost completed it now. This was the last part of the program we planned for. Later on, we added the part you mentioned about going down from Glover Park. Uh, and we have not, uh, we have not yet considered uh, what type of uh, pedestrian thoroughfare we need to get to our, to our community up in uh, Cottonwood. But at the time we put this thing or rather together, we originally put it together, Cottonwood was not part of the formula. So over time, with the help of good planners and, and good fortune, we are getting ready to, to probably end the project now of 20 years of planning. Okay, I will now read the uh, capital project ordinance. Being ordained by the Governing Board of the Town of Nashville, North Carolina, that pursuant to Section 13.2 of Chapter 159 of the General Statutes of North Carolina, the following capital project ordinance is hereby adopted. Section 1, the project authorizes for the installation of sidewalk along 1st Street from Glover Street to South Park Subdivision, or South Creek Subdivision. Section 2, the officers of the Town of Nashville are hereby directed to proceed with the capital project within the terms of the adopted resolutions and the budget contained herein. Section 3, the following amounts are appropriated for the project. Project construction, $179,238. Right-of-way, $63,500. Engineering, $23,500. For a total of $266,238. Section 4, the following revenues are in anticipated to be available to complete this project. CMAC federal contribution is $212,990 and the CMAC local match is $53,248, totaling the same amount, $266,238. And then Section 5 starts the, the implementation thing. The finance officers hereby directed to maintain 
within the capital project fund sufficient specified detailed accounting records. Second, section, section six, funds may be advanced from the general fund as necessary for the purpose of making payments due. Section seven, the finance officer is directed to report on a quarterly basis the financial status of the project. And section eight, the budget officer is directed to include a detailed analysis of past future costs and revenues of this capital project and every budget submission made to the board during the duration of the project. And section nine, copies of this capital project ordinance shall be furnished to the to the clerk of, of the governing board and to the budget officer and to the finance officer for directions in carrying out this project. Adopted this first day of May 2018 with appropriate signatures and attestations, followed by the the project plan, which goes on for many pages. Does the chair hear a motion we approve this budget ordinance? So made. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? It's important to note uh, the town, it, this is an 80-20 match, and the town is putting in $53,248, and that's for one of the projects. And the yep. second project, it's about the same amount of money. I think it's about 49000 48000 some change. Okay. Is there any discussion? There being none, all in favor of indicating so saying yes? Yes. yes. Opposed, no. It is done. We move to the next one, which has already been explained. If I can find it here. Uh, this is Capital Project Ordinance <coughs> C5616F. Uh, Bill ordained by the Governing Board of the Town of Nashville, North Carolina, that pursuant to Section 13.2 of Chapter 159 of the General Statutes, uh, the of Chapter 159 of the General Statutes of North Carolina, the following capital project ordinance is hereby adopted. Section 1, the project authorizes for the installation of sidewalk, sidewalk along 1st Street from Washington Street to the bridge crossing US 64. This shall include the upgrade of Oak Street from Washington to Elm Street. Section 2, the officers of the town of Nashville are hereby directed to proceed with the capital project within the terms of the adopted resolutions and the budget contained herein. Section 3, the following amounts are appropriated for the project. Project construction, $199,003. Right of way, $34,000. Engineering, $15,000 for a total of $248,003. And Section 4, the following revenues are anticipated to be available to complete this project. Uh, CMAC federal contribution is 198403 CMAC local match is $49,600 for a total of two forty eight three. As I said, 49000 Correct. And six hundred. dollars Correct. Uh, section 5, the finance officer hereby directed to maintain within the capital project fund sufficient specified, sufficient specific detailed accounting records. Section six, funds may be advanced from the general fund as necessary for the, uh, my paper's been up, for the purpose of making payments due. And section seven, the finance officer director report on a quarterly basis of the financial status of the project. Section eight, the budget officer director to include a detailed analysis of past and future costs and revenues on this capital project and every budget submission made to this board for the duration of the project. And section nine, copies of this capital project ordinance shall be furnished to the clerk, uh, to the governing board, and to the budget officer and to the finance officer for direction in carrying out this budget. Adopt this first day of May 2018 with appropriate signatures and attestations. Does the chair here motion we approve this ordinance? So made. Is so there a second? Second. And second. Is there any discussion? Mayor, yes, yes. I'd like to say something. Sure. Yes, the town is spending money on the sidewalks along with the grant we're receiving. But our children and our citizens deserve the right to be able to walk to the park from their place of residence on a sidewalk and not have to walk in the street. And that's the reason I have supported the sidewalk projects the whole time. And we'll continue as long as we're able. <coughs> yep. Okay. Other comments? Um, the town match comes out of Powell Bill money. Is that correct? It'll come out of reserve, reserve money. Yeah, but plus the yeah, Powell, Powell bill can be used for sidewalks. Yeah. Does it come out of Powell bill? Yeah. Yep. Our, our intentions are not to use Powell bill money for this project, although Powell bill money is eligible. That's not our intention. So it comes out of 
Ultimate General Fund. Fund. Correct. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor, indicate someone saying yes? Yes. Opposed, yes. no? Okay. That's done. And we're moving now to, to some budget amendments. There's one here that involves our action. The rest were internal things that our manager did. Uh, the first one, uh, uh, amendment 37, deals with a donation to the police department for the Hope Initiatives of $1,450 and is being put into the drug prevention uh, line item, increasing that uh, from $50,627.38 to $52,077.38. Does the chair motion we approve this amendment? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. We approve the amendments. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. 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 Opposed, yes. no. Okay, that's done. Okay, Mr. Rayford, next three of your internal things. Will you take care of those for me, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, budget amendment number 34. Pick up, please. Oh, hold on. Thank you. Uh, budget amendment number 34 was to move money to gas oil and tires for sanitation. Uh, we didn't have money available. Our money was we didn't have money to to cover that expenditure, so it was moved so we can make a purchase from Colony Tire. Um, budget amendment 35 was for a fuel pump for the Chevrolet truck and the rec department, uh, where we did not have funds available. And then 4,000 was moved out of training in the fire department to cover an expenditure for engine 141, which has alternator issues at this time. Um, I would anticipate more budget amendments from here on out. We've got one uh, governing, regular governing board meeting left for the year, and we're running out of funds in many of our line items. So I would expect a large number of, of budget amendments in the month of June. Um, that concludes my report, Mayor. Thanks, all of you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, council comments. We're down to the end of the thing. Mr. Taylor, would you like to start on that side? Could we vote on this? What? Could we vote on this? Okay. No, we don't need to on this last one. Uh, Mr. Taylor? As stated earlier earlier this evening, I, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad that everybody, we, we've got a room full tonight, and I would hope that uh, to see this, see this room full like this again. I realize some of the decisions that we that we've made may not have set well with some folks, but uh, without you doing what you've been doing the last month, calling me, stopping by, and discussing these things, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to try to support the needs of the town. So please don't stop. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Taylor. I kind of echo. Larry, I, uh, I'm glad the people are involved. I sit here many, many meetings and nobody ever comes in the room. And so you kind of think everything is moving along. Everybody seems to be happy. And uh, tonight, we can't, we can't hear you, sir. I'm sorry. I forget about the mic not used to talking to do it. What I said was I am, I echoed Larry's comments. I'm glad to see this room with people in it because many, many meetings, there's nobody here but us. So you assume everybody's happy. Assume it's a terrible word to use, I know. But if you express to us your feelings, it makes it easier on us decision time. <coughs> So thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Hinton? Yes, um, I want everybody in this room to know about something that happened to me on May the 17th, just about a year ago, in a closed session that was not legal because it was about me. It was under the guise of personnel, and I want everybody to know about it. Good for you. I want everybody to listen carefully. I was ambushed by these four guys over here, including Michael Coleman. 
They accused me of trying to get our manager fired in collusion with the fire auxiliary. And it was a lie. I knew nothing about it. I was encouraged to go after the fire auxiliary. I don't know what the motive was, but there was nothing to it. There was no truth. And last Thursday, we had a closed session, and Hank Raper's minutes that he had written from that year ago meeting indicated that I had tried to get him fired by myself, not in collusion with the fire auxiliary. All of a sudden, that had changed. And every one of them said they knew nothing about the fire auxiliary. All of a sudden, that had gone away. And it was on my shoulders. Absolutely no truth. They cannot corroborate anything. They can't find one person who can tell you that I tried to get him fired. A month prior to that, we had given him a 10% raise. And I voted for it. If I voted for Hank Raper to have a raise, why would I be trying to get him fired? It makes no sense whatsoever. And I resent it. And I've been sitting on this for a year. And they all went along with it. And the only one who halfway apologized to me was Larry Taylor. And I defy you to say that you did not indicate the fire auxiliary. This was a rumor. They ambushed me based on a rumor. I would never do that to any of them. A month later, I had my attorney meet with the mayor and Hank, and our town attorney at the time, Mike Gaynor, who is no longer with Fields and Cooper. And my attorney wanted to let them know that I had not tried to get Hank fired. And I wanted them to know that I resented the fact that they ambushed me in a closed session. And in closed sessions, we're not supposed to talk about it. But I am talking about it because it was wrong. And I want everybody to know about it. I want the news media to know about it. These men, there were five. Michael Coleman was a part of it too. I polled the room. I asked, has everyone heard this rumor? They had all heard it. And you can shake your head if you want to. You encouraged me to go after the fire auxiliary. Will you let me say something? Please excuse me. Let me say something. And you actually mentioned names. These are comments. Let her finish. Let her finish. And then Thursday night when we finally got those minutes, no mention of the fire auxiliary. All in me. And under the guise of personnel, I'm not personnel, but I was the focus of that closed meeting. It was absolutely wrong. So if you think the cemetery was wrong, yeah, I understand. I understand fully because I was treated that way myself. I would and, like and our mayor was a part of it, and I thought he was my friend. I'm still your friend. Oh, wrong. <laughs> what I said to Mrs. Hinton in the meeting, I had not heard anything about what she's talking about that night until I got in that room. I knew nothing about it except a name was called, and I told her. I said, I would go see this person and question them if somebody, if one of you people said something about me, derogatory, I would go see you and ask you if you did and why. And that's the only comment I made to her. So I, I, so I don't think I owe an apology. Let's don't, let's don't banter this right here. Oh, I'm going to just say this. If they had heard this rumor... If they had heard this rumor, why didn't one of them have the backbone, the backbone to pick up the phone and call me and say, hey, Louise, is there anything to this rumor? 
Are you trying to get Hank fired? But no. Mayor Street, I spoke to you the, that night, right before that meeting. The night before, actually. I was inquiring about your health. We had a nice conversation. In that conversation, you didn't mention once anything about the next night we were going to have an ambush or the next day. Well, it was supposed to be a meeting and not an ambush. Yeah. From your As Mr. Perspective. Taylor said the other day, the composition of the board is the composition of the board. It's got nothing to do with that. Okay. It had nothing to do with ambush. It had to do with business. Oh, yeah. And business. Mr. Taylor, as he mentioned the other day, it's the composition of the board. You know, it's not that we're ambushing anything. It's just the way it was. And it was not the fire auxiliary mentioned. It was one individual in the fire auxiliary. In the fire department. Okay. You ready to move on? Yeah, but I, I just want everybody to know about this. And they'll probably try to kick me off the council for disclosing information from a so-called closed session that was not legal. Which was very legal, by the way. So stand uh, by. I expect them to vote me off the council. <laughs> but I would hope that you would support me. Okay. okay, Kate? I just have a little bit of a change of tone. Um, I wanted to thank everyone who came to speak today. Um, it's essential that we hear from you all, and I really appreciate you doing it. I know it's a difficult thing to do. Um, Lynn, I appreciate you writing your article as well. I've heard from several people that it was extremely helpful, um, that it put it into terms that everyone can understand. Um, I want to thank everyone who's called, everyone who's written emails. <laughs> it's always good to hear um, your voices and what it is that, um, that you all want. And I want to thank everyone who came out in the audience today to support um, the speakers as well. Um, it, it shows in, in your numbers. Um, <clears throat> we had a municipal service district uh, meeting and I just wanted to give a little plug. We have a public hearing that's going to be coming up. Um, so everybody mark your calendars, any interested parties, anyone who wants to discuss um, <clears throat> future projects for the town, for the municipal service district. It's going to be Monday, May 14th at 6 p.m. Can Brian correct me if I'm wrong? I think it's in here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so just make sure that um, you all come to that. And then the last thing is that I'm glad that it was brought up today as far as um, comments, um, and our policy on uh, the time frame for that. It's something that is on my radar and we are working on it. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, everybody, thank you for coming. Glad you're here. Please come back again. Frequently, we'd like to have you. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. It's been moved and second we adjourn. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor indicate so by saying yes. Yeah. Opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>